Okay, so in this uh, short video, I'm going to show you how we um, create the white background shots we do of the hearing dogs. And the reason we've developed this technique is it actually is easier for us to um, Photoshop it clean than it is for us to constantly clean the white vinyls in between every shot or every dog. Because um, the dogs are coming in off, um, possibly off exercise, um, and so there's always mess on the background. And um, we had to develop a way of getting around that that was easy for the trainers and the dogs and was easy for us as well. So here's a, a shot. Um, this is one of the hearing dog puppies. Um, and what I'm going to do first is I've cut in a little bit tight here on um, the shadow area. So I'm just going to expand that slightly with the crop tool. Okay, marquee. I'm just going to stretch that down. Very simple. Doesn't look convincing to start with. But it will look much better at the end. Um, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to create a pair of layers. The first one is called the blurred background. And then the second one is going to be called white background. So we're going to, for a minute, just turn the white background off and go back to the blurred background. Um, we're going to convert it to a smart object, which is much more versatile. It means we can make some decisions um, and then change them later if we need to. Filter, noise, dust and scratches, um, select whatever settings you want, um, depending on your camera resolution and the size of the bits of junk that get in your way. Um, second filter, we're going to blur that background now, but I'm going to use a surface blur. And that's quite specific. Although the surface blur is, looks quite stylized if you did it on anything other than a task like this, what I really need from it is that this boundary here along the bottom of the pores will stay fairly clean because that's the whole point of the surface blur. It looks for edge boundaries and doesn't blur the colours across it. Hit OK. What I'm then going to do is grab my pen um, and with the lasso tool, very quickly round the edge of the dog. You don't have to be too accurate with this. Don't go over the dog if you can avoid it. Okay, so I've now got a selection, invert the selection, and from that I'm going to create a mask. So now what you can see I've got is I've got a reasonably blurred shadow here, but this is the dog that's showing through on the background layer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the white background. So the white background, we enable it first, or make it visible. Um, I'm then going to command click on the mask of the last of the blurred layer. So it creates loads of selection again. I'm then going to go edit, fill, and fill it with white, and deselect that. Okay, so I've now got actually a pretty good starting point. But I need to get all of this to be really nice and clean and white. So what I'm going to do is with the dodge tool, and I'm going to set the dodge tool, nice, soft, fairly large dodge tool, to highlights. Make sure the protect tones is off. And that's going to paint in. The reason we use a dodge tool rather than any other masking technique is the dodge tool itself has algorithms in it that protect um, the edges. So as long as you don't paint directly over the edges, even though they're, I suppose, technically highlights, is it will do pretty well at not um, making them brighter. And that's what I want in this sense. I want a really good edge. The better you can get in underneath the pores, the more realistic the end effect will be. As with all things in Photoshop, if you, the preparation is everything. Okay, so now that's pretty good. Just tidy up a little. Okay, that looks about right on this edge. Again, trying really hard. I'm using the, the tool very softly to not um, eliminate little spikes of fur like this, little tufts. Um, and just to make it um, a little bit easier, what I'm now going to do is create a curves layer, an adjustment layer. Create a point on the on the curve. Set that to about two, four, two, something like that, down to one. And what that's doing is compressing all of those highlights into, or expanding the highlights rather, so they fill the entire range. Um, and then everything else just goes black. So with the white background selected, I can now see where I've left just a little bit of tone in the highlights. I'm just going to mop that up very quickly. And this is just to make sure that when the image is printed, there aren't any stray patches of ink going to be left on the page because they'll look really messy. 
Incidentally, the reason we go to a pure white all the way around the dog is that in the end um, use of the image, um, these are probably going to end up in posters or flyers where um, the brand is to have a, a white background and they can just lay text all the way around this dog knowing that no ink is going to come from my image except where they can see the shadow or see the dog itself. Um, it's not ideal for printing, really you should lay ink down, um, but what I'd need to do then is liaise with the printer, just let them know this has gone to pure white or if they look into it they can see it's gone to pure white and they'll just need to adjust it ever so slightly so that a little bit of ink is laid down in all the white patches um, and that'll avoid those old sheen effects you get if you don't do that. Turn the curves layer off. Okay, so that's now masked in pretty tight. Um, with the one tool now, what we're going to do is we're going to just update the mask on the blurred layer using this as the guide. So using the mask tool, sorry, the magic one tool, set to a tolerance of about four. Select the, all of the background. Um, we just delete the old layer, the old layer mask there, and on blurred, and then create a new mask from it. And this is a much tighter mask now because it's used the white that I've just dodged in. Um, it will be much, much tighter. Back to the white background, create a new mask, brush tool, uh, paint in black. Now what I'm doing here is I'm not creating a new shadow. I'm simply exposing the original, though blurred, shadow from the photograph. So you can paint this quite hard. I'm not trying to be clever with it. I'm just revealing it. And that way the shadow will always look convincing. And there you have it, one white dog, about 10 minutes work, um, and it looks pretty good.